but we briefly discussed what was uh, already there, like or it met up with Unleash. Uh, there was a call with the Unleash folks later today regarding performance. Um, A-B testing is going to be the top goal of 21. We didn't really discuss that yet, but I take that as uh, something I read somewhere. And there is uh, Unleash plans to move into that direction as well, as in um, they have variants, which is kind of like a limited version of A-B testing. And then we kind of got into some details around uh, how that works for them which is currently restricted by fixed percentages. Uh, it's beta less here and this year it's stable. So, and we uh, are seen by Unleash as uh, competitors or as partners instead of competitors. We give them great exposure and contribute back to the open source project. So, um, you still there or or did you just deactivate your... Yeah, I closed my video to save on bandwidth. Okay. Yeah, so let's let's uh, jump uh, into the next point which is kind of like where we want to take this meeting um ultimately like it, this was intended as kind of like a brainstorm meeting uh you, you uh, requested it in my uh, pto management issue and uh, what is your exact like what are your goals what is your expectation towards the deliverable coming out of this meeting so i actually set up like a whole day for you and i i think tomorrow uh, to kind of just deep dive into the research outcomes, um, open up some implementation issues, uh, come up with a think big proposal, like similar to what you did with uh, uh, Flow A in the three year vision. Uh, so I wanna come up with a big picture first, what we wanna achieve, um, a little bit about how it's going to look like before we drill down into the small nitty gritty de details. So if we take a uh, zoom out for a minute, let's just talk about the goal of A-B testing, which is, you know, to experiment with different types of uh, variants in your code and to get feedback back from these different variants um, in order to make a conscious decision of which flow of the code you're actually going to keep over time, right? And when we're talking about A-B testing, we're talking about experiments as a title. And so uh, we already did one brainstorming session with the developers and we had some things that came up from there like experiments are bound in time. So, so I think like that's something that you need to define in advance. Like what's the goal of the experiment? How long you want the experiment to run? Who is going to run the experiment? Who's going to run the analysis? And um, who has permissions to change your experiment on production. If you want to write along with me on the agenda, that would be very welcome, but this goes a little bit too fast for me to write, uh, to write along. So what is the goal of the experiment? Who is... So I'll, I'll let you finish, finish the sentence there. And that's interesting, right? Like the duration of the experiment. Um, this is like, this is not, this is not a fixed. This is not a fixed uh, period of time in certain cases, certain circumstances. It depends mostly on the amount of traffic. Okay, so these are the questions, the big questions that um, I think we need to answer before going to A-B testing. And then we have a whole new topic, which is new personas. New personas. That we'll be using it. Uh, so we have product managers. We have UX designers. We have marketing folks. Sales. So we also have a bunch of non tech, non techies. So right. So this. What? Non technical personas who will be introduced with this in mind. Uh, yes. The, like. 
It's not. Would you agree? I didn't understand the question. They're still part of the persona of an, of an A-B test. Uh, yeah, these are part of the personas for the A-B testing, which are not our natural persona for the release stage. On top of the existing personas. So the idea for tomorrow is that we're going to kind of um, create like a happy path, right? Like we're going to figure out like, all right, how is this flow going to gonna work? Yeah. So, so we have, um, I would say we have a definition phase. Uh, I'm talking about the user flow, okay? User flow. Um, we have a definition phase, then we have ongoing tracking. Uh, getting metrics and analysis back, um, digesting the data. On in the definition phase. Um, decision. Phase and experiment. And we also discussed uh, on the ongoing, we have collaboration, collaboration, discussion with the team, editing parameters. Hold on. Ken? Okay, I'm going back to my office. Just one minute. I'm taking you with me. In the meantime, you can hear my daughter playing the piano. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, my, my internet has been giving me problems all week. Uh, okay, so where were we? Collaboration on the ongoing tracking phase. But all right, so, was... um, go ahead. I'm losing you again. I'm gonna try to switch internet, so just give me a minute, okay? Are you still there? Let me try. Keep our videos disabled or? Sorry? Disabled? That way we save on that way. You keep breaking, uh, breaking up in the middle of the sentence. It's hard for me to understand the question. Uh, should we like, I think it's better if we disable the video, like we don't need okay. it. Okay. There we go. So hopefully it'll be better. And so we want collaboration. So this is where in the middle of the experiment, the team has a place to discuss. Um, it has, uh, if you need to change something in your experiment, um, like adding a variant or changing percentage, this is where you would do it. Um, of course, we need to adding add something of this of the sentence. So again, 
uh, if something, when you're monitoring your ongoing experiment, sometimes you need to change the percentages or you need to change a variant or you're, you're gonna totally get rid of a specific variant. So this is the place, what I, when I call uh, ongoing tracking phase. Um, then we have getting metrics and analysis. So someone, um, probably someone technical is going to change something in the code, but like a product manager or someone is going to oversee the metrics and analysis and say, okay, um, no one's actually hitting this blue button, let's get rid of it. And then they'll probably open an issue for a developer. And the developer is gonna be the one that actually does that. Okay. Um, then we have digesting the data. So we need to figure out how we're going to present these analytics. Is it gonna be a graph view? Is it gonna be API? How are we going to bring back the data? So let's say we're using Snowplow like we do um, for counting smell. How are we going to bring that data back into GitLab and present it so that it's easily understood? Because this is going to be a non-technical persona. Yeah, I think this is one of the, the, the difficult things where um, depending on how you want to approach it, like how are we going to support, like from the research it is, if I remember correctly, um, they want to have a like, single metric they can kind of go down to to see, all right, what is the health of my, of my experiment? And this is what we're gonna need to connect to whatever they are using to collect the data, right? Are we gonna support one single tool or like, are we gonna have an API where they can kind of feed in the data to present it within GitLab? Like, how do you see that working? So I think we should be agnostic to the analytics tool and provide an API. But I do think that for the first iteration, we need to choose one to see that everything's working properly. But to, but in the beginning, you said? I think we need to be agnostic. So I think we need to provide an API. And I would test this using Snowplow because that's what we're using currently internally. Test using Snowplow as we are using this internally. So, um, when I think back on uh, unit tests, which uh, have like a standardized XML format, I believe, and if the uh, system then finds such a, like an XML format exported as an artifact of the pipeline, it will kind of like see that and say, all right, this is like gen unit test report. I can present this information regardless if it's J unit, X unit, you know, it doesn't really matter. Like as long as it's like a, a unit test, it can read that kind of thing. Do you yeah. know if there's something similar with like um, the exported data? Yeah, so what I think we need to do is uh, kind of get help with the monitor from the monitor team because they're agnostic to any metric system. Uh, they use um, Prometheus heavily, but they can, can connect to anyone. So I would assume it's very similar in that sense. All right. Uh, will you but be included awesome. into such conversations? I mean, I mean like, uh, are they aware of that we probably will gonna need to make use no. of their This is just an assumption that I have. I haven't uh, spoken to anyone from the monitor team yet about it, uh, but I plan to ask for their help. You can also probably also use gro the growth team because the growth team is using Snowplow and they are also using feature flags and they are doing some kind of experimentation. So we need to figure out how, how they're doing it and then just copy paste, I guess. So the growth team is also a really good use, uh, resource. Helpful here. Uh, what did I want to say? I know the growth team is, is going like in different ways to kind of get what they want. Like, 
I like I still look into the notes of my interview with them, but um, they are kind of leaning on something else else than Unleash, as far as I know currently. They're actually using three. They're using Unleash, they're using Launch Darkly, and they're using Flipper. Flipper is the one that I was thinking about. Um, yeah, I think that, I think it's it's really helpful to get the growth team in there and then immediately start dog fooding uh, the things that we can dog food. Yeah, but even before dog fooding, just like understanding how the metrics come into play and how they would like to view the data. Uh, the growth team is like a really good persona for us because they represent our customer. Uh, what are they tracking? So what are they tracking? I actually have a lot of information on that. Uh, how do the metrics come into play? I also have a discussion. I've had a discussion with one of the engineers um, to have a discussion on like how the growth team is, is, is using, you know, Flipper and kind of like how their flow is, is working from a developer point of view, which is, I think, pretty interesting. Might actually make a lot of sense for you to watch the recording of one of those. Um, I can send it to you later if you would like to. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so on that note, um, in terms of the A-B testing uh, research, there's still a couple of interviews to be done, which is, this is one of them. Uh, or at least to be done, to be tagged as well. So um, in some of the earlier interviews, my note-taking was less optimal, so I have to redo the note-taking. For the other ones, they're all done. And uh, I think especially for if you want to kind of, you know, connect with the growth team, there's a lot of information there still to be tagged, which is going to be able to answer many of these questions for us immediately, to be honest. Okay. Um, all right, so a, a little bit back, I wanna go, so this is the ongoing tracking phase. So you have your collaborations that people can, you know, adjust um, what is there, like they can add the parameters of the experiment. Uh, there is an audit of what's happening. Uh, they're getting the metrics and anal anal analysis to some extent. Yeah. Um, so this is interesting, like digesting the data. How will it be presented? Do you have your reports? Um, so reports, you to... um, I'm not sure it has to be part of the MVC, but if we're doc talking about a think big, um, some of the interviewers uh, mentioned that they have to export some reports that prove why an experiment was uh, like the results and why they made a decision to to leave something in. So I think it would be really convenient if we could create such, um, at least graphs to be exported into a spreadsheet or something like that, uh, so that it can be later used directly from the tool. So, so if, if, I, if I recall correctly what you said, you want them to export the data into an Excel sheet and then the data- Well, it doesn't really the matter the format. It can be Excel, it can be PDF, it can be whatever. Um, but it should contain the data of the analysis, the graph, um, you know, the name of the experiment, the duration of the experiment, um, the results, and the final decision of which variant was chosen at the end of the day. What do you want to come out of GitLab? You mean? Yeah. So like an export to a static format that people can present them. Yes. Okay, and, and why why shouldn't it be like dynamic? Like in writing GitLab, they can just pull up the report, see exactly what happened and what the latest and greatest is. Um, so it depends on your persona. If someone is presenting this to their exec team, the executives are not gonna go into GitLab and do this, they need reports. But yeah, I, I, it doesn't have to be part of the MVC. It's just something that came up from uh, from some of the interviews, um, and I thought it would be useful. Okay. Uh, reports. Um, 
static file format. Explore. Uh, I think digesting the data is kind of like one of those important things. Like, what do you think about like? You got a lot. You got your main metrics. You got your side metrics, um, and you got the metrics which are kind of what you're going to base your decision on, which are not directly like. So l let me give you an example. So say there's an experiment going on. Uh, there's uh, a website with two different buttons. I don't know, like your theoretical example, and um, we're measuring on clicks. Okay. But the clicks are not the thing that is going to persuade us. So like one is better than the other, right? It's, it's like, um, did we get a greater conversion because it was part of some kind of e-commerce e workflow? So in that sense, you would want to say, all right, flow A, indeed, the only difference was this button, but did they actually buy more products, right? Did they buy a larger amount of product? Did they spend more money? So then you will have to kind of derive from the clicks and how, you know, like it's, it's not as easy saying like, oh, in this, in this experiment, like 51 people clicked the button. Yeah, but did it actually help them like, you know, buy the product, yes or no? So, so that uh, really goes back to the first issue, which is defining the experiment was the goal. Because I think you need to know what you're measuring in order to um, make a good decision. I, if, if you're counting clicks, that should be the, the decision point. But if it's not, then, then like, why even bring it forward if it's not interesting? The um, uh, supportive metric. So I have this in one of the, the meeting notes of the, of the research. And there's three different kind of like, things you want to be measuring, or yeah. at least available then. Um, yeah, yeah. What, what, what I'm trying to say is that um, the main health metric of the experiment is not always exactly the same as the direct um, metric you are monitoring. So clicks doesn't always mean the health of the project is going well if there's many clicks. But yeah, it, it is part of the definition phase. I'm just wondering like how much um, finesse or granularity are we going to offer to our users in defining like the main metric to be presented to say, all right, it's good or not. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I think for the think big, we need definitely need to take this in, under consideration. Um, because I think that, you know, the number of clicks will tell you how many people actually interact with your new thing, which is interesting. But uh, yes, it doesn't necessarily convert to revenue. So um, I guess in the goal setting, we would probably need to define the metric the decision metric, which would be revenue. And then you would have a place to define supporting metrics, maybe even in a YAML file. Um, and that way, when you watch the graphs, you can probably select which metric you want to view, but you always have like the line for the main goal in all of them to keep you in check. Good. Um, what is more like, uh, what, what would you, what would you say is more part of the definition phase from your point of view? Um, so I think, I think, um, you know, in order to make a decision or even if we wanted to automate a decision, you need to have a hard metric that says, um, you know, a, a clear winner winner. So if we're measuring revenue, you want to see what, what converted into the highest revenue. Um, so you need to find a way to measure uh, and compare the, the variance and choose the winner. And if you're talking about um, not a comparison measurement, but uh, to see, I don't know, like number of clicks went up by 10%. That's the end of the experiment or something like that. So there's different, different ways to end an experiment. It can be you reached your goal. It could be duration. Um, it can be duration, uh, 
if it's like a seasonal thing, like a holiday kind of like special or something like that. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it's mostly based on like, hey, did we get like significance in our results based on the amount of traffic that we get, right? So if you remember the uh, interview we had with Booking.com, they mentioned that they have experiments for two weeks. They have a set uh, date. Every experiment runs for two weeks. And then it's done and they collect the data after two weeks and decide based on that. So it can be also duration regardless to like a season. It can be without, though I think that booking.com is one of those places where you can say, all right, we have, we have enough traffic regardless. And right. if that is the case, then we don't want to be like, I think that is the case with booking.com. If I remember correctly, be, um, too much influenced by like, for example, a single holiday or a single like day that is different from all the others. So they take two weeks as a standard measurement time, which makes kind of sense. Though I wonder how that works in like the Christmas holidays. I wonder if that two weeks is indeed a good time format for that, but hey, I don't work at Google. Maybe you will. Who oh, so knows? <laughs> Amsterdam, it's always easy, right? Um, let, let, let me think. So definition phase, do you also consider um, I, uh, how I was thinking is like, you know, part of the discussions happen there as to how we're going to do this in, in the product, like what the experiment changes are going to be like, like there's the development part of it as well, right? Yes. Development of the experiments. Um, it's setting, so know what you're measuring. Um, development of the experience which is setting up tracking and setting up different variants um, and I would actually say you know part of this is also the design and discussion leading up to that yeah do you see this being part of like an A-B testing issue or kind of like a discussion which is separate from an issue? Or do you want that to be in an issue and then an A-B test is kind of like similar to what an a feature flag is right now? So if we convert feature flags into issues, then an A-B test would be an issue. A feature flag or? If we convert feature flags into issues, A-B testing would follow suit. Also get an issue type. Yeah. Well, no, it would be a feature flag, but it would be an experiment. So do you think that a, a B test always converts to be a single feature flag or that certain A-B tests might require multiple feature flags to function and, and be able to, you know, in that sense? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so in my mind, it was always a single feature flag feature flag. And I think we can do something really nice. I know you hate when I go to solutionizing, but uh, uh, I think we could do something really nice where a combination of experiments, which are flags, could be tied under one epic, um, like the mother of experiments. Uh, so how would you see that working across like an A, B tests? Like, like I'm thinking of flow here. Um, so say that you have an e-commerce flow where there is a, um, you're buying a project, uh, a product and you have to, you, you know, like uh, authenticate with your bank then, which is a different product and then come back to the original e-commerce website which kind of leads you further into buying the product and like finishing up, the, you know, making you aware that they sent you an email of confirmation, blah, blah, blah. So in this case, in this, in this situation, the A-B test would go beyond just the initial project you're developing for. And perhaps you're also part of the, the bank, the bank, uh, banks thing. So in that case, a single feature flag will not tie to a single experiment. Like an experiment can span beyond like a single feature flag. Do you think that is uh, misinterpreting this?
I think that there, that there, there isn't a difference between A-B test and feature flags in that sense. Every feature flag relates to a single feature. So I would say A-B testing relates to a single feature. Having said that, you can have multiple feature flags that are turned on and off in different strategies and different environments, and you need to man manage them all on an instance level or on an environment level. Um, so I think the way I see A-B testing is that way where you can have multiple experiments running at any given time, and they may have a single result of increased revenue, but each, each feature probably contributes to that somehow. So how, uh, let, let me give you a different example, just to test, to test the water sphere. Say you have a, a microservice uh, setup of your application. Um, so in your group, you have like 40 microservices and for this experiment, you will need to adjust things in four different projects. Would then the same logic still apply? Yes. Um, so regardless of the fact that it can span different projects, Again, what's interesting is the environment level. So if the projects all deploy the same environment, um, it's really important to see them all at once, but it's also important to measure one, each one of them individually. And I think, so, especially if you're talking about a microservice architecture, um, the ability to um, silo one of those experiments is really important because you can also decide that one of them is, is finished and it's uh, achieved its goal, but the others have not. So I, I really like the fact that, I like the microservice concept and I like the individual flag concept because I think the smaller and the gran more granular you have, the more control you have over it. Okay, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Like I was wondering, I was perhaps going into the direction of uh, where we have issues in epics and epics live at live at the group level, so to speak, mm -hmm. and can I, like include multiple issues. It might make sense for a B test to yeah 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 exactly group level, to level. So I think actually the way that you said it would be an A B test would be a single issue, and an experiment that combines several would be converted into an epic level something. I don't even know what it'll be called. Probably not Epic. <laughs> I don't know the name yet, but I think that's a really nice way to, to group them together. Okay, that, that actually makes sense. Um, and especially as if it, if it spans, yeah, like A-B test can be so big. On the other hand, like if we go group level immediately with uh, A-B tests, it does mean that you always need to have a group in order to do an A-B test, which I would say makes sense. But you know, if you want to support a single project with A-B tests within that single project, you would need a group as well. So, um, but on the other hand, like I think, I think I think this is something that shouldn't be too much of a problem because most of the companies we're targeting with this would be larger than a single project, right? Yeah, so what's really important, and we didn't mention this in the user flow, is um, how to view all the experiments that are currently running in my project, slash group, slash instance, slash environment. So sorting and filtering again is really important which brings me back again to the feature flags as an issue. Issue. Um, let me see. Yeah, sorting and filtering. Yeah, this is super important. Also came out in the um, interviews. Okay, so definition of phase, know what you're measuring, setting up tracking, setting up different variants. Is there anything else you expect 
for the definition phase? For the what? For the definition phase, like, you know, like the discussions around what the experiment is going to contain, like what, what are you going to measure? Uh, but, and then the development of the experiment, of course. So I'm gonna... Yeah, so I think we also should have here, where are we in the definition? Know what you're measuring. Uh, Setting up tracking, setting up different that um, our milestone sprint date uh, experiment. Um, then I have like, if we drill down into details and not look only in the high level, then we also need to take here into account, I'm putting this under the questions section, um, uh, freeze, uh, what, sorry, what should we do when there is a deployment freeze? Uh, or incident in production. Are you allowed to run new experiments? Edit current ones. Feature flex here beyond like deployments um, interactions, right? Like it's already no, so the feature flags. We actually um, opened an issue to uh, disable them when there's an incident going on, because uh, you don't know when you're handling an incident if something is going wrong because someone's playing with a flag or something. So we disabled everything. We haven't yet. There's an issue for it. Is it, is it desirable as a as a thing? Like I would wonder. Like when we have the feature flag types, right? The different types, some of them are, you know, feature flag that should be around forever. Some are access limiting, some are, you know, short bound. Yeah. And this would kind of like just say, all right, there's something going on. Disable all of them. That would mean that half the project will not be running as it was anymore. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know, if you have a production incident, you just want to have your service up and running. Experiments kind of take a side note bar to that. It would be a heavy, heavy failure in that case, but yeah, there's probably an upside here for this. Yep. Um, all right. What I'm also wondering is, um, should experiments have versions? The, the code is version controlled. Um, so let's say you did an experiment and then you changed it along the way and now, you know, it's totally, the users are seeing something totally different. So I'm wondering, I don't know if this is a must. I think it is not. My uh, my gut says that because I think you would create a new experiment if you change things alongside the experiment while it's in progress. Like if the experiment has started, like we shouldn't meddle with the experiment any longer, except for like you know percentages and those kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. So I think not. But we can also ask the growth team, right? Yeah. Uh, put my comment to the other one as well. Uh,
Okay, cool. Um, so we had the definition phase. Uh, we got the ongoing tracking phase. And then we have the decision phase. And this is kind of looping back into that kind of like discussion around the experiment brief, I would say. Yeah, so yeah. Do you want to get back into that, that, that brief or that, that like discussion place where you're going to document what has been decided upon? I think so. Um, I think that the experiment needs to needs to end to okay so you make a decision back right um, Right. Document the decision, and when you end the experiment, we need to remove all stale code. Uh, all not stale, all code from the losing variance. Uh, You still there? Yeah. Ah. Um, yeah, that seems good. Uh, how about we we can't like we now have some initial go over and we kind of like make a Figma document tomorrow where we kind of you know create initial uh, steps similar as in a three year vision. Where we're gonna kind of you know like detail this out a little bit further like how this looks how this like which subflows there are um and ideally a little bit like uh, set it up with a, a job to be done format in mind like there's this 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 major one and then there's all these sub ones and then these sub ones have little small ones in between and we kind of make our base our steps based on those uh jobs to be done what do you say sounds good Um, so let me set up that uh, Figma document for tomorrow, and I'll add it to the to the meeting. Cool. Document. Um, by the way, a small request. Um, yes. Tomorrow we also have the three-year vision uh, review, and when I was looking back into the document of the three-year vision, um, there were these notes that we kind of like discussed briefly. There were mispositions, so I was wondering, like, could you do a small review, like, give it like 15 minutes or 20 minutes of your time, and write a little piece at each of the steps of flow A, and see, all right, hey, this is what I'm thinking. These are my thoughts. These are what I would like to see changed. And I can make the changes later today, and then we can have a productive discussion tomorrow because it was kind of hard getting into things after coming back for four yeah. weeks. I don't know. I'll try, but this is what my my calendar looks like today. So I'll try, and I have all the kids home. So I'm not making any promises. Uh, yeah, I'll try my best to see if I can fix things in the meantime for the three-year vision. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Great. Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you, Orit. Bye-bye.